Subconsciously, I was picking places and flowers and things that Janet liked. Maybe it was my way of honoring her, or maybe it was my reaction to loss. Today, we light the Christ candle for Janet, for all mothers and others who have known love and treasure.
reading from Luke 2, verses 8 to 20. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sanctuary that has been renovated by Phil and his crew and the incredible work of the Board of Managers. In the new year, when you are inside, in this place, this sacred place that we have set aside to be with God, I am so excited to hear and see your reaction. For the meantime, we are still virtual. We are trying to be safe. Uh, if you've been hearing, I know that in Nova Scotia, our cases have been very few. But if you've been following the news in Ontario and the provinces around us and south of the border and in the UK, 
you will know that this is a very, very serious matter. And the session has determined that for the meantime we are going to remain virtual. But we hope, we hope in the new year. In the meantime, Merry Christmas. And as we gather on this season of Advent, which is unprecedented and unlike any other Advent any of us can ever remember, I have been pondering in my heart what would make this Advent um, meaningful. How can I make sense of all that is going on around me and find hope? And I, I, I've heard from several of you who have said to me, Kevin, I am finding hope in the Christmas carols. I am, I am singing the carols, I am listening to the carols, I am reading the carols, and the words are filled with hope. Last night, I heard from several people who told me they're singing joy to the world. So my friends, what carols are bringing hope to you in this very challenging time? I was reading an article this week online uh, about some of the great preachers of our time and what Christmas carols they are pulling out at this time of year that is giving them hope. And my favorite preacher, the preacher whom I love to hear, William Willimon, retired Methodist bishop, said the carol that he most finds meaningful is Carol Our Christmas, which was written uh, down under New Zealand, Australia way. And he, he, he was down there for Christmas one year and he couldn't believe celebrating Christmas because as you know it's summertime uh, at that, in, in, in December and the words of that hymn speak to a very different reality and uh, I want you to hear those words in particular listen as Anne sings them to you now of an upside down Christmas. to me is the Magnificat, Mary's Song. It's, a, it's an amazing piece of music, but the words are often, um, we tend to look past them because we have people like Anne who can sing the Magnificat in such a magnificent way that we sometimes don't pay attention. But I want you to hear my favorite Christmas carol, sung by Anne, the Magnificat. I want you to hear the words that Mary speaks about the Savior that she is about to give birth to. I want you to hear the words of the Upside Down Christmas. God has done great things. 
And both of those carols speak of an upside down Christmas. And you may wonder, why would I choose those words? When I think of the season of Christmas, I always think of something that turns our world upside down. Consider with me these stained glass windows in our church that are in probably most churches. And on one hand, we have Mary and Joseph on a donkey. A donkey would be a symbol of the lowly, of the common person, of the poor, not of a stallion. And they are going for the census where they will find no room because when this child, the Savior, is born that Mary speaks of, he will be born in a manger, in a food trough. That is an amazing story, the Christian story, that God would come into our world through a teenage unmarried woman, a scandal. Further, that she would um, and her partner, Joseph, travel a long distance only to find no room for the birth of the Savior, no palace, no mansion, that he would be born in a common stable surrounded by animals. This is the story of the birth of Jesus. Further, when the angels come to proclaim the announcement that this is the Savior, they first come to shepherds. And shepherds were, in Jesus' time, considered to be a very motley group. They looked after dirty sheep. Shepherds were considered very, very dirty, very rough. And yet, that was who the angels come and share the news. So my friends, we have a story of the birth of our Savior given to a young woman who is not married for the birth that happens in a stable and an announcement that is given to shepherds. This is an upside down story because in that culture, as in our culture, we expect good news to come from the high and the mighty, from the rich and the famous. My friends, whenever I'm at Sobeys or Superstore and I'm lining up to get groceries, what is it that everyone is looking at? That's right, all of those celebrity magazines. We are fascinated with celebrities. We are fascinated with wealth. We are fascinated by the high and the mighty. And yet our God is fascinated with the poor, with the unexpected. When our God chooses to give us a birth of a Savior, one who will lead us to the path of truth and life and life to come, the vehicle and the channel is, is Mary and Joseph in a manger with shepherds. It's a great story. My friends, I, at this time of year, I want you to think about what has been unexpected for you? Where have you seen God's hand? I have seen God's hand at Bethany in many different places. I've seen Bev Johnson step up to, to nurse and care for members of our church who needed home care in COVID times and could not find it. And Bev stood up and said yes. I have seen our phone ministry call people, people like Brian Shields, calling people in our church who are isolated and alone. I have seen Phil and his crew and the board of managers transform this place into a beautiful sanctuary. But let me tell you where I have seen God's hand very profoundly in Advent and is my great Christmas wish. Early in the pandemic, when our dear friend Headley was not able to be in the sanctuary, he was alone. He and Julia, his sister, had found community. Or said, Headley had found a, a home here at Bethany. And suddenly he was not able to be here. And one day, Glenn knocked on his door, Glenn knocked, and said, what, do you, what would you normally be doing? And Headley said, well, 
Julie and I are thinking of the time when our late mother would plant a garden. And Glenn said, I'm all on that, I'm on that. And wouldn't you know it, the next day, Glenn was at the door with fertilizer and a shovel and seeds, and they were planting a garden. Like one they hadn't planted for 10 years. The, garden, the ground was hard. But they planted that garden, Headley and Julia and Glenn. And they gave birth to something in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of isolation, in the midst of dread, of all the tragedies, of all the death, of all the sadness. There was life. There was relationship. My friends, that story over and over and over has given me life. And it is an unexpected gift. It is an upside down Christmas for me. What has been your upside down Christmas? Where has God spoken to you in this Advent season that has turned things upside down, where you never expected to find God? And God turned things upside down, right side up. And suddenly things made sense. I want to hear that story. When we come out of this COVID pandemic and I'm socializing with you and talking with you and we're talking and we're sharing coffee, I want to hear those stories because Christmas is a story of an upside down Christmas. My friends, I wish you all an upside down Christmas filled with hope and possibility and peace to you and yours and all of our world, I pray. Amen.
we come to a time of prayer and before we begin to pray I want to acknowledge that we stand on Mi'kmaq territory unceded land and we give thanks for that land that was first theirs and now is ours and we uh, we pray that we will look after that land and do well uh, with our Mi'kmaq brothers and sisters it is time to pray and we pray um, at a time of crisis around the world here in Nova Scotia our numbers have been relatively small this Christmas time, but around the world, not so much. So we pray for persons who are living with this virus. Uh, we also pray about many deaths in our congregation and many illnesses in our church. And we pray for our own community here in Halifax, for the homeless and the poor. My friends, let us pray. So God, we give thanks for this gift of season the beautiful uh, winter nights. Um, we give thanks for the, uh, the stars in the night. We give thanks for um, our community of faith at Bethany that keeps us warm. For those phone calls and cards, for those socially distant visits with masks. We give thanks for community. We give thanks for your gospel truth that reminds us who and whose we are. We give thanks for a Savior's birth that reminds us that in the midst of difficulty and challenges, there is a source of light in the darkness. There is truth, there is justice, there is love. We give thanks for we walk often in those foggy days and yet the light pierces the fog and gives us a pathway forward. We give thanks for people who we have lost this year, persons who have by their saintly lives created a light, a pathway for all of us to live. And now together we use words that have been handed down to us generation from generation, words with power, words that speak of love and compassion, and words that speak of uh, a destination, of a place we can call home. And together, we say the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
friends on this most holy night, the staff here at Bethany United Church, the leadership of this church, Kim, Lucy, and I, we all wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.